Hello and welcome to the channel. This is part 5 of the Excel VVA tutorial for beginners. In this video we'll talk about variables and we will learn to declare, define and use variables in VVA. Variables are used to store data in the computer's memory and that's the data or values that we usually need in the macros to perform the different tasks. Here on the left you see the different data categories in Excel and on the right the VVA types, types of variables. So usually they correspond to the different data types. So for example, the currency or the date variables here exactly correspond to those data types over there. Um, the integer, long, double, those store numbers. And the string is for text. So then we have other that do not necessarily correspond to the type of data such as the boolean variables which only requires two bytes of memory and it can be either true or false which is a very useful uh, variable in programming and then we have the variant uh, variable type which can store any type of data variables should always be declared we do that with the following structure deemed my variable as a data type. So dim stands for declare in memory. My variable is the name of, our, of the variable we are declaring and data type is just what we've seen in the previous slide uh, is the type of uh, variable. So it, it can be a boolean, an integer, etc. Then we can assign the value to a variable with this other expression here. So we just use the equal symbol. Let's move to the Visual Basic Editor and see some examples. So here, sub, variables. Variable names must begin with a letter and cannot have any space or special symbols and cannot be longer than 255 characters. So for example, uh, that could be my ID, my name, uh, let, let's declare it. So dim my name as a string or for example dim available items as an integer or dim delivery date as a date. We can also put that in a, in a single line using a comma separator. We can use option explicit to make variable decla declaration mandatory. If we add option explicit and we do not declare a variable, we get an error. That's added here on the top at the general declaration section. So it's good practice to ensure we declare all the variables. Now let's assign some values to these variables. So for example, my name equals John. Available items equals 100. Delivery date, so yeah, any date here. And we can of course pass information in the workbook into the variable, usually from the range or cell, as we've seen in, in the previous video. So name equals range b2 dot value. And also we can write into a range or cell the value of a variable. So range d8 dot value equals delivery date. So if we play this, we get the, the date here. We can perform mathematical operations with numerical variables or concatenation or other text manipulations with the string variables. So let's put this in other procedure. Uh, and for example, the total cost is going to be equals the number of items times the item price. Or um, my full name equals my name and we have in a space here, and my surname. And of course, we should declare all those variables before. So up here, the total cost as an integer, uh, number of items as well, item price, 
etc. We can perform any other operations with variables using VVA functions. We'll not cover that in this tutorial, but you can have a look at the full list of available functions in the block. Variables can be declared at different levels in the VVA project. So far, we have just declared the variables at the procedure level. So they are only available within that particular procedure. And they hold the value only until the procedure ends, if declared with the dim statement. Let me insert other module to show you this. Sub add to items. We're going to use the variable available items, declare as an integer, and we will add one to the value like this. Available items equals available items plus one. And then we display the value with a message box. So message box, the total items is available items. But if we run the macro, it's always going to give just one, because the variable only exists inside this procedure and until the sub ends. Then the value is reset. Now, we can keep the value in the computer's memory after the sub ends using a static instead of dim. So if we change here a static, now if we run it, items is one and then two and three, and it keeps it in memory until we edit the code or we press the reset button up here. If we want a variable to be available to other procedures, we need to declare it at the module level up here in the declaration section. If we use here dim, and I remove it from here, now it's declared at the module level and it behaves at, as a static, so it holds the value until the project is reset. Let's see other example. We have a macro here, sub get info. And it's going to get the name and other info from the user. So let's say username equals John and user role equals manager. And then we call another macro. And down here we have the other macro, display info. And here we have a message box that is going to display the username. Now, if we declare username at the procedure level here, and let's also declare user role, we play and the message box is empty because the variable only exists in the first procedure. So we need to declare it up here at the module level so let's change it, and now if we play, it displays the name, because it has been declared at the mod module level, so it's available in the whole module. So if we want the variables to be available to other modules or user forms, we need to use global or public variables. These here are private and they only exist in the procedure or in the module. So if we add a new module, and here um, let me add a new sub to display name with a message box to display that username variable, if we run it, nothing happens. So if we call that from module one, nothing happens. We need to make the variable public so that we can pass the value from module one to module two. So we change up here public instead of dim, and now it's available to other modules. So if we play, we can see that it keeps the value now. Finally, we're going to talk about object variables. Variables can also store objects such as a worksheet, a range, or a shape. And that's helpful when referring to multiple instances of the same object. 
We declare them in the same way we declare other variables. Let me show you some examples. Deem payments as worksheet or deem RNG as range, deem SHP as shape. But to assign a value or to assign the object to the variable, we need to use the set statement. So we do that with set payments equals worksheets, sheet one, for example, or set RNG equals worksheets, sheet two dot range A1DA. Now we can use the variables as any other object. So, for example, to refer to a range in the payments worksheet, we would write payments dot range b1 dot value equals import or rng dot interior dot color equals VV yellow. We release the object from the computer's memory by setting the object to nothing. So for example, set RNG equals nothing. And that's how we use variables in Excel VVA. In the next video, we'll talk about conditional statements and loops. See you there.